lead dioxide electrodes are one of the best electrodes you can have as a home chemist. They are incredibly robust and one of the few that allows to form the perchlorate ion. The only main others are platinum and burned up diamond, but all of those are very difficult to obtain and quite pricey. So in this video, I'll try to showcase to you how you can make your own lead dioxide electrode. The list of things and reagents you will need for this project are a source of cerium, I will use cerium dioxide, hydrochloric acid, some tin, some lead, some nitric acid or maybe also acetic acid if you don't have nitric, of course some titanium mesh or plates, some sodium hydroxide and of course an adjustable power supply. The first step will be to prepare the intermediate coating between the titanium and the lead dioxide. It's made out of tin tetrachloride plus a dopant which in this case will be cerium trichloride. You could also use antimony trichloride if you have some. But anyway, I first start with some cerium dioxide polishing powder that I bought for cheap on Amazon. As you can see it's almost white with only a slight hint of yellow beige and I'm saying that because cerium dioxide bought online can often be contaminated with iron oxide which makes it more orange and you should try to avoid it or purify it because otherwise you won't make a good coating because of the iron impurities. I weighed out a random amount with this new scale and pour it all in the tunic flask. And then I did the same thing with the hydrochloric acid. Mine is only 33% and you should use the maximum concentration you can because this reaction is extremely slow. That's why we have this reflux setup here and I also added a few drops of 30% hydrogen peroxide from time to time as well. And even then, it took 3 days to get a shit healed. So the full reaction probably takes about a week or so, but since I didn't need everything, I just decanted the water and boiled down the serum trichloride which is this white solid. Beware that it's very hygroscopic so you need to store it sealed. Now let's make the tin tetrachloride hydrate. Technically you can make it by burning tin metal in pure chlorine gas, but I wanted to try another route to make it. The first thing to do is to melt the tin in a small strip to make it easier to dissolve later. I tried to pour the alloy in water, but it didn't work and it just made a thick wire. So instead I just made a little pancake which I later cut it in small pieces. I put all of the pieces in a beaker and added a random excess of hydrochloric acid and a bit of hydrogen peroxide again. After some time the metal tarnishes and finally evolves hydrogen gas under some heat. What's happening here is the hydrochloric acid is reacting with the help of the hydrogen peroxide to form stannous chloride and hydrogen gas. As you can see there are some undissolved bits of metal, which is actually silver because the solder I use supposedly contains 3.5% of it, which I recovered later by making it into a gram of silver chloride. The next step is to add two more chlorines atom to the tin dichloride we made. But as always, it's not that simple because if we directly react the tin dichloride with chlorine gas, the tin tetrachloride form will be hydrolyzed by the water to form tin dioxide, which we don't want. So the trick is to first saturate the solution with hydrogen chloride gas to favor the presence of tin tetrachloride hydrate. To make the HCl gas, I have this gas generation setup with table salt in the flask and concentrated sulfuric acid in the addition funnel. I also added a trap at the end to catch unreacted hydrochloric acid vapors and not gas myself. Then to make the tetrachloride I made chlorine gas by replacing the salt at the bottom with a pool chemical called sodium hypochlorite. It's like the weird sibling of your household bleach. The cool thing with it is that it can be stored as a solid unlike bleach so it's pretty useful. When some chlorine gas is generated, you can immediately observe the formation of a sort of cloud which is the form tin tetrachloride that's reacting with the water vapors in air and making the white tin dioxide as a smoke. We don't really want that to happen but it will stop when all the water is gone. After some time, the apparatus gets filled with chlorine gas, which looks greenish and so the reaction should be finished. Now let's prepare the titanium electrodes. The thing to do is to make a handle by welding a small piece onto the main mesh. I use the modified MOT because if you try to melt the titanium with a flame, it will just burn away and form titanium dioxide. As you can see I have prepared two electrodes this way. Now I need to do something called etching. Basically the surface of the titanium needs to be cleaned very properly and to do so we will dissolve a little bit of it in a solution. For preparing the solution, you can use boiling hydrochloric acid or oxalic acid and if you have some fluoride salt it will help too. Here I measured some oxalic acid and a touch of potassium fluoride. 
I put the powder in this beaker and added water to dissolve them. I heated the solution until almost boiling and dipped the titanium in it for some time. Ideally, you would continuously boil the solution until it turns slightly purple because of titanium ions, but like the full am, I didn't do that, so hopefully it still works. Subtle foreshadowing! Now to make the coating solution, we just add our sodium chloride to some ethanol in the beaker, and then we add the tincture chloride solution. I cover the beaker with a glove for stirring, because I also bubbled some HCl gas through the solution to not decompose the tinteja chloride. Anyway, I dried one electrode with some paper and dripped the coating solution all over it. Now to remove the solvents and be left with a solid coating, I just need to blast the electrode with the blowtorch until the electrodes take on a white color. <laughs> I then repeated this step for about 20 times for a good and thick coating. Now we need to prepare the lead dioxide coating solution. Most people on YouTube use lead nitrate or just plain sulfuric acid, but that's pretty shit, so we're gonna do something else. First, I measured about 40 grams of lead metal on the scale, and then I added an excess of nitric acid to dissolve it. While lead is not too dangerous in its metal form, the lead nitrate that we are making is very toxic because it can penetrate through the skin, so you have to wear gloves. For the reaction to work, we need to heat the beaker until orange nitrogen dioxide gas is produced. Make sure to not breathe it because it's toxic as well. Once all the lead metal is dissolved, we can prepare a sodium hydroxide solution and add it to the lead nitrate. This will precipitate the insoluble lead to oxide PBO, and if you use stoichiometric amounts, you can directly add more sodium hydroxide to form the soluble salt, lead plumbate, which will make the solution colorless again. But if you've used a big excess of nitric acid, for example, you can just filter the lead oxide, and also if you don't have any nitric acid, you can also use some good acetic acid. The more concentrated, the faster the reaction, and if you don't have that either, you can use any other source of lead oxide really. Finally, once everything is ready, we can start the plating process, or so I thought. Turns out the preliminary coating on the titanium I did is not good at all and has a pretty big resistance, so the lead dioxide coating I did on it was very thin and poor, and took an abnormal amount of time. But even after all this work, I wouldn't give up so easily, so I decided to make more serum trichloride and tinged trichloride pentahydrate. I used the same methods for the same trichloride, but I think the first coating failed because of the way I made the tin trichloride as I didn't use stoichiometric amounts anyway. So here is the better method to make tin trichloride. The first step is to make an alloy of tin and lead in a ratio of approximately 7 to 3. So I first weighed 9 grams of this solder that is mostly tin and 4 grams of lead. I then <laughs> melted it down using my blowtorch and made this tiny little puddle. The reason we did this is that we want to dissolve the alloy in nitric acid, but tin alone would not react with nitric acid, so we have to add some lead as well. To make the reaction faster, I also cut the alloy into small pieces with my immense strength. Then I added 50 ml of isotopic nitric acid, and this time you cannot use other acid like vinegar, because the reaction is a little different. The tin metal gets dissolved by nitric acid, and forms a white insoluble solid which is metastanic acid. The reaction is exothermic and also forms lots of nitrogen dioxide gas, so make sure to not lose it again and do this reaction outside or with good ventilation. When the reaction is finished, we are left with our metastanic acid and a slightly blue solution which is due to some copper impurity from the solder, but it shouldn't matter too much because I filtered the metastanic acid and washed it multiple times with water. After drying a very low heat for some time, we are left with 15.6 grams. Make sure to not hit it too much, otherwise it will decompose into useless tin dioxide and water. You can also dry it over the sun if you have some sun where you live. Then to form the tin chloride, you just need to add some concentrated hydrochloric acid. Here I use 23%, but the higher concentration the better. If your acid is too diluted, it will not react fully and you might lose a lot of yield. As you can see, even my 23% didn't dissolve anything, but that could also be due to some tin dioxide contamination. To saturate the solution even more with HCl, I made this generator and bubbled an excess of HCl to ensure only tin tetrachloride and HCl will be left in solution. Finally, I filtered the tin dioxide impurities and it took like 3 hours. 
So draw your metastatic in the sun if you can to avoid this. Then I just dissolved some more serum trichloride in ethanol and added a tin trichloride solution which had somehow turned green. With this solution, I repeated the preliminary coating with the blowtorch, and now we're gonna again try to cut lead dioxide onto it. I passed half an end through it for a few hours in the plating bath, and as you can see, we have a beautiful coating. All right, so now that we have finished plating the electrode, we're gonna remove the PB three O four, the lead oxide, the um, the kind of red one, orange one by using this solution of sodium hydroxide and sodium bicarbonate. Basically, we just run the exact same system, but we don't use the same current. As you can see, I have 4.4 volt, uh, 4 amps and approximately 7 volts. And this will gradually remove the, the litharge, I think it's called, this oxide. Yeah. I didn't have the time to make petrolate with it yet, but be sure I'll make a video about it once I do. Anyway, thanks a lot to Exotic Chem Lab for helping me through this project and thank you for watching. I don't know when I'll release the next video, but I'll try to keep my usual shit schedule, even with Christmas and shit. So yeah, have a great day, have a happy new year, and maybe watch this video if you're a little bit crazy and think the chlorides are better than bachlorides.